So we are at Carbon Steed, the bike painting and carbon fibre repair expert in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And I have two Earls Falleth Evo frame sets with me about to get examined. But first of all, for those of you who follow the channel and perhaps have been getting a little bit irritated with how long this whole project has taken, the bike review of the Earls Falleth Evo frame set, can I please give you a little bit of context first? So here she is, the production model I will be reviewing on this channel very shortly. With a custom paint job based on an old Porsche 904 colour scheme and I've picked her up for the time being with some 69 millimeter rims and some 30 millimeter tires and in this box here we have the original frame that i got sent for review back in february this year but this was the pre-production model that had some issues with it so i thought we'd take this pre-production frame in to see gary at carbon steed and on our way down there we're going to pick up another frame so after the pre-production shambles, I obviously decided to continue on with this project with Elf sending me that custom painted Porsche frame set you saw earlier. But to be expected, I received some criticism and rightfully so. In fact, I'll pull up this comment chain and this was under one of my elves posts it sort of summarizes the general sentiment well some people think that i shouldn't bother with the project anymore some people think that i should continue on with it and one person despite the condescending tone <laughs> throwing a fair and reasonable idea out there finish this project off the same way that you started it so that's where we're going now i ordered a frame anonymously on the 6th of March, 2023. So I'm just out the front of Wes's now. Hey mate. Hey, how are you? Thank you very much. You're very welcome. We've got one stop before we get to Gary's and that's to see Aaron. Hello. Hey Cam. Now before we get into the meat here, can I please say, if you decide to jump off this video before the final summary where I have statements from Elves and also a senior engineer at a mainstream bike company, you will simply be uninformed. So this is the first time in my five year history on YouTube that I really encourage you to stay to the end. Visual inspection, I mean, it looks the same as the other one, but again, it's just an external visual look at it. This looks a bit different than your one. It looks like there's like a high fill. So remember the first one you had and the seat post wouldn't go in? Yep. And then the, the second one you had, this was fixed from the prototype. But I would say it's got bog, you know, like a car filler on the top of there. And then this area here on the top is a bit rougher. Peeling. The peeling in the bottom bracket shell. So a lot of that is to do with the bladder that goes inside and they've just ripped the bladder out and it's probably pulled all the resin or the top surface resin with it. But again, get carbon specialists to look at it. And then your cups or the actual manufacturing of the bottom bracket area, they're not the same thickness all the way around. So they're, yeah, you will think this varies a lot. Yeah, so if you look up inside the frame, there's a huge piece, like a strip of like a, it looks like glue, obviously. You don't need that excessive weight. It's already a heavy bike, right? It's one of those things with this one. You, it, no, you, you win some and lose some between the two frames. I don't like this. Again, not that it necessarily matters, but look at the, the lower section here. See that bearing seat? So it's all crumbling away. Yeah, that's pretty poor. That's not as good as your one. There's lots of pitting there. If you're gonna go to Gary, I'd get him to check all that because it looks though it hasn't been compressed properly. We're at my new premises in Maroochador. Sunrise Drive, just off the motorway. So it's super easy for you to access. As you know now, you're heading down to Brizzy, so you're gonna pop in, pop out. So next up, we've got Gary at Carbon Steve, but while I head down there, I did ask Wes about his thoughts. Mate, it all started off well. He got back to us fairly quickly after your order, and then the free, free bars. bars, which yeah. is great. Yes, yeah. um, and responding to everything really quickly up front. But then obviously the frame started taking a while to come and we were expecting it within about a month and after about six or seven weeks we chased him up and from that point onwards just the advice we were getting didn't really match up. So I'm going to quickly jump in here with some additional context. Putting on my elves hat, apparently they moved their manufacturing facilities during our ordering process creating issues in their supply chain and the poor old Australian distributors being caught in the middle of what became a bit of a shit show. I've now put on my consumer hat, I've paid you my money, you said it was gonna be 15 days, so where is my frame? He was telling me that it would be on its way at the end of the week and then we wouldn't hear anything for two weeks. I think we're, what, over three months from when it was three first months. ordered? When we measure the thickness of the steerer tube, it comes up as two millimeters, which is 
exactly what I'd expect with the micrometer. Pre-production, but it's not fantastic. It has evidence of delamination and stuff inside it. But, you know, you get that from time to time. But this little bella here, with well, it looks to be half carbon and half fiberglass. How, how do you know that? Well, you can see the outside's black. If you put these two together, yep. you can see that one's carbon all the way through. This one here so appears... Like clear colour inside. Correct, yeah. So bike companies will often put a layer of fiberglass on the inside of their cheap low-end bikes, or the other thing they'll do is maybe if they want to isolate aluminium from carbon to stop galvanic corrosion, they may have a layer of fiberglass. Okay. But you know, when we measure that, it measures, yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, which kind of suggests you've got a whole heap of delamination and stuff in there, and um, yeah. This is not, I wouldn't consider that a good steer at you. So that's your pre-production one. That's your pre-production one. But just, you know, looking, it doesn't look terrible, you know. This is where I question whether it would be all over the place. And it is. You don't for a minute think that that's 0.6 thick. Yeah, it shows signs of delamination and there's, there's not many frames you can go completely around and find no delamination yeah. in. <laughs> well, that looks like they learned from what you were saying about the seat post, because you can see in there somebody's... That's not out of a mould, you know? Yeah, that's okay. been sanded and finished and somebody's checked the measurement and everything. When we spray a bit of solvent, see the, the white resin in there, right in the edge there? Yeah. I can't give you a rock solid, but it looks like there's fiberglass in there. Yeah, they've got, when they've gone through, you, you often see that. When you drill through carbon, you can often break the back layer out. Right. That's what that is. Oh, okay. So it, I don't believe it's anything to do with the mould. Can you see it at all in there? It's yeah. even like you drill through a piece of wood and you'll see the back of it splinter out. Same, so same. What's going to happen? Yeah. What's going to happen? <laughs> Okay, right. Is this the same brand? Because I, I don't keep up with all the frames you bring me. As the one I said that was really good. Ah, oh, this. <laughs> As we were saying, this it's almost too nice, you know, for um, a mass-produced type thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> it doesn't look the same, hey. Yeah, and they just yeah, like you just look around the, the surface of that, and that would be a bond in piece, but it's just rough, you know. If I'm buying a carbon bike, I want a carbon bike. Because obviously you're going to cut the steerer down. Yeah. We can chop it open and have a little look. Ski. And here's one I just chopped off this morning. This was off a canyon fork. And you can see the differences between them. And we'll head upstairs, right, okay? Yeah. We're going to slice these open and um, have a look inside. Okay, so not scientific, I know, but I don't know if you noticed how much harder the canyon was to cut through. I'll put the mask back on and we'll grind back down. You know, you can clearly see the inside of that and compared to that. And in all honesty, if someone's gonna save weight and money, it's the canyon one. And I don't know if the, you picked up on the camera, when we broke through the fiberglass into the carbon, it was just flicking off, you know, so they don't stick particularly well together. So that's where you would get a DLAM reading. Can I see fiberglass strands? No, I, strands, no, I can't. Do I believe it's fiberglass? Yes, I do. Yep. Is that carbon? Yes, it is. Yes. So immediately after seeing Gary, where surprisingly the focus shifted from the pre-production frame to the anonymous frame I purchased, I contacted Elves asking for clarification because this goes well and truly beyond my pay grade. Here's what they said. All fork steerers have fiberglass. Our Evo did have white fiberglass, but we now have changed it to black. All brands have fiberglass in their fork steerer. Now, I took the cap off this special one they sent me, and that has fiberglass in it too. So things are adding up. Now, the question is why? The inner wall of the fork steerer needs to be reamed. So all brands fork add the fiberglass on the inside of the steerer because the carbon fiber is too hard. It cannot be reamed. Fiberglass is soft and can be reamed. Now, the speculated fiberglass that Gary thought he identified in the seat tube area, elves are saying they don't put fiberglass in their frames. It just goes in the steerer. So after this sentiment from elves, I started to do some Googling and I found this forum where someone is sharing his top of the line Ridley fork which has a very similar look to it. So I'm really starting to question, is this common? Fiberglass in the fork steerer. So I started to ring around because Gary was still adamant, particularly after he went and reinvestigated his pile of forks he's got upstairs, that he only sees fiberglass in the cheaper stuff. So after ringing around for a few days, I felt like the information that I was getting was 
feel the right word for this is ambiguous. I just couldn't really figure out was it coming, was it not, what's the deal with it? And then I got an email back from a senior engineer at a big bike company and this seemed to clarify things for me and articulate them in a way that I feel like I can share it with you. So here's what he said. If stiffness to weight is your primary design target, then the use of glass fiber, he calls it, same as fiberglass, does not make sense. If you are looking to make an economic carbon fork, then glass fiber can replace carbon fiber at a lower cost with equal strength. Now, beside the direct structural behavior, there are the following reasons, and there's three of them, why the use of glass fiber can make sense. Number one, on traditional forks, the inside of the steerer is typically machined to fit the expander plug. Often glass fiber is used in the area of machining as it's easier to machine and cheaper when machined off. Reason number two, this is going pretty deep now, woven cloth, carbon or glass, is used on the surface to even out local stress concentrations. As glass fiber is available in finer cloth and especially cheaper in this processing method, glass fiber is used instead of 1K carbon woven cloth. And number three, and this is the one that Gary was alluding to earlier, and I feel like this is story time with Cam Nichols, galvanic corrosion. Whenever we have permanent alloy inserts in the frame, there needs to be glass fiber in direct contact with the metal part. Otherwise, there is a risk of galvanic corrosion over time and inserts getting loose. We're almost done. Therefore, we apply fiberglass with all metal inserts that are permanently bonded into the frame and are not held by a pure mechanical fixation. There you go. So this rabbit hole I've just brought you along on just goes to show that not all frames and forks are created equally and the use of glass fiber or fiberglass is perhaps more common than you think. For me as a consumer, and I'd love to hear your thoughts below, I just wish brands would tell us on their website, am I buying a full carbon frame or does it have fiberglass in it? I think that would help this situation a lot. But irrespective of all this, from a riding experience perspective, this bike actually has some great qualities, which I look forward to sharing with you in the review video coming soon.